Hello, everyone. I'm Warden Darren White from Dufferin County. I'm joined today by Michael Lansford. Michael, as you know, is a well-known Canadian sportscaster, uh, and he's going to talk with us today a little bit about mental health. So before we get too far into the conversation, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on Michael and his past. So he was there when TSN went on the air in 1984. He's a renowned sportscaster, former anchor of TSN Sports Desk with more than 5,000 episodes under his belt. He's also hosted off the record, Naylor and Landsberg in the morning, first up with Landsberg and Koliakovo. He's covered the Winter Olympics in both 88 and 2010, Summer Olympics in 2012, and was twice nominated for a Gemini Award for Best Host or Interviewer in a Sports Program. Michael is an ambassador for Bell Let's Talk since it launched and is a champion of mental health from the Canadian Alliance of Mental Illness and Mental Health, and was honored with a Canadian Screen Humanitarian Award for dedication to promoting mental health awareness, and also was awarded the Meritorious Service Medal by the Governor General of Canada for his mental health advocacy in 2017. And that's just a small part. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, yeah, it wasn't that small a slice of it. Just by the way, I think that was everything. And you may have <laughs> actually added a little something in there, which I totally appreciate. Thanks for having me. Uh, I wanted to cut you off halfway and say, okay, okay, we, we, we get it. Um, because we, uh, this is a really important talk to me and for me. So let's dive into the meat of what we're talking about. For sure. Well, I mean, you know, as you know, it's a challenging time with COVID-19. You add other things on top of it. You know, the racial tensions currently, the issues out in Nova Scotia with the shooting, you know, it's and it's challenging for people and it's catching up. And in my particular example, you know, as warden of the county, I'm in charge of the county of 70,000 people. And it's been a sustained response for three months now. And about a week ago, it all caught up and came crashing down on me. And I had about a 24 hour period where I just couldn't deal anymore. And some of my staff have, been, have said the same thing. So wow. it's okay to sort of, my, I think my message is it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help. So thoughts on sort of where we are and what we're going through. That's uh, really scary. Uh, I mean, you said that to me just before we came on. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I've ever, uh, I certainly haven't heard that very often what you just described. And, you know, I, I would say that I would strengthen what you said in that you said it's okay not to be okay. Uh, and it's okay um, to talk about it. I would say even stronger, it's not okay not to talk about it because not talking about it is the norm. You know, we're, we're you know, coming out of a hundred years of stigma or I don't know how long it was around, but I imagine it's always been around. And the fact that people still suffer in silence and people will still tolerate the pain of mental illness uh, and forego really in a lot of ways their life, because I've been there. I know that in particular depression, um, it robs you of your life. And even though su suicide without a doubt is the greatest tragedy, there's other tragedies too, Darren, and one of those is living with that kind of pain, a joyless existence, and it's so tragic when that, ex when that happens, but also even more tragic when people go without the help that maybe could help them. So it's not okay to not talk about it. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's really great that you're saying that. I'm, I mean, I, like everybody else, have members of my family who struggle with anxiety disorders and 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 depression and different things. I watch my niece, who is a beautiful soul, uh, deal with this on a daily basis. And she is a writer. She is learning to blog about it and, and put her experience out there to help others. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm guilty of, I'm that guy. I'm the, eh, it's not going to happen to me. I'm a tough guy. Don't worry about it. And I'm starting to realize that the only way to deal with it, the only way to effectively manage that is, is to be willing to talk and say, maybe I need a bit of help right now. Yeah, well, you know what would be interesting if you and I were talking to your constituents, how, how many people did you say you're responsible for? Just under 70,000. Okay, so let's say 70,000 people were at the Rogers Center in Toronto, and they had come out to hear you and I speak, which is perhaps a departure from reality, but let's, let's go with that. So they're all there, and you and I are up there talking, and I'm talking about my mental health struggles, and you're talking about your own experience, and I asked the crowd at that point, 
who do you perceive as the two strongest people in the Rogers Center right now? And I can almost guarantee you that they would point to us and say, you guys are because you're sharing, because you've stepped up and you're not ashamed and you're not embarrassed. And because you're talking about something that other people would never talk about. So not only is mental illness not a weakness, but sharing it is actually a sign of enormous strength. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and it's, it's, I'm so glad that governments like mine and like others are willing to to really start looking at mental health uh, uh, assistance and mental health programs as part of the overall health spectrum. Um, it's something that, you know, for many years we didn't really talk about and it's thanks to folks like yourself and uh, and others who are bringing it to the forefront. Well, you know, it's uh, it's the kind of thing that has enormous benefit, like me just saying these words. My name is Michael Landsberg. I've suffered from depression for 20 years, anxiety for most of my life. Uh, I'm on medication today and I will be the rest of my life. This illness has taken me down and robbed me of big chunks of my life. But I'm not ashamed and I'm not embarrassed and I'm not weak. And just saying that basic statement, which for me is the easiest thing on the planet. Like I can tell you the first time I said that, it took no courage whatsoever. But because other people are afraid to say that, the benefit of me saying that is far greater than the challenge for me of saying that, because it takes no courage. It's the easiest thing in the world, but the world doesn't see it as easy as I see it, and therefore they need to hear it. Yeah, you're right. And I mean, I remember when you first started talking publicly about it, a lot of people, particularly sports fans who followed TSN, uh, were, were going, wait a minute, like, this can't be happening. But it started the conversation. And it's a very important conversation it certainly needs to get out there more than any more than more than anything now, particularly now that everybody's lives have been turned upside down very quickly. So, you know, yeah. It's amazing though, Darren, that it's, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. And it's so obvious that as a society, as a world, that we need to progress, that the stigma is so antiquated. But the fact that it still remains today, I think is, is kind, of, kind of really horrifying when you think about it, that in 2020, we have been aware of mental illness, uh, I mean, I guess for 100 years, but you know, modern psychiatry has been around since the 60s, and yet still the majority of Canadians would rather suffer in silence than share something that is not self-inflicted, that is not their fault, but the perception is that oh, this must be me, you know, I have, a, I have a great house, I have a great family, why do I feel this way? I must need to toughen up. And the fact that we still see the world that way, I think is, is shocking and tragic. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's really great. I'm so glad that I can have a platform now to tell people, you know, don't be scared to ask for help. Call your neighbor, call your friend, call your family, call me if you have to. Uh, my phone numbers are all over the internet for different websites, but you know, I, it's just, it's important that we reach out to those uh, who are maybe sort of uh, not just those that are obviously struggling, but those that live on the margins as well. Uh, right. Those folks really need us to uh, reach out to them. Yeah. So let me, let me say that. a few words to them yeah. um, to, uh, and, and this is admittedly easy for me to say, because I have had the benefit of everything in my life. I, I grew up in, a, in an upper middle class home with parents that loved me and no matter what I did, they supported me. Uh, I got married to a woman who provided me with the same things. My kids do the same things. I had enough money when I was sick uh, and continue to uh, be on medication. I could afford it. I could get in to see a psychiatrist. I could afford to see a psychologist. So I've had every benefit in the world. So when I say what people should do, it's not that I believe that it's easy. I know it's not. Plus, I worked for an employer for most of my life, or for a lot of it, um, Bell Media, right? You mentioned uh, that I was a spokesperson for Bell Let's Talk Day. So I work for a company that is understanding. So when I say this, come forward and share. Find one person to share with. It starts with one person. Sharing is an acquired skill. At the beginning, it may be the toughest thing imaginable. You may go, oh my God, I can't imagine ever sharing this secret that I've been holding that, you know, I'm really miserable and I'm really in a lot of pain. And when I act like I'm happy, I'm not happy. 
That may seem like the most imposing task in the world, but if you, if you do it once, if you find, find one person that you feel safe enough with, and even if you don't open up with the full story, just a little bit of the story, the next time a little bit more, and the next time a little bit more, and eventually you're telling the whole story of your struggles and you've told it to one person and then you find another person and you tell it to them, you can get actually really comfortable with the sound of your own voice saying, my name is fill in the blank and I suffer from depression. I have been miserable <clears throat> for a decade and I'm not ashamed and I'm not embarrassed, but you got to work sometimes really hard to get there. Mm -hmm. I see people in my family suffer with that and, and other people around me uh, suffer at different levels. It's a great message. Uh, talk about it. Don't be scared. Ask for help. And I think that's the message we can leave with folks today. Uh, before we leave, Let's talk about what you're doing now, sicknotweek.com. It's on, uh, on the web, it's on Facebook, it's everywhere. I watched, uh, I checked it out, it's fantastic. Uh, it's interesting, it's upbeat, it's stories, it's, it's a little bit of everything, so tell us about it. Well, um, thank you for asking and thank you for those words. Not that you really have any choice. I mean, since I'm your guest, it would be really weird for you to go, hey, I went to sicknotweek.com and I saw this show Isolation Nation that you're doing. I didn't like it much. That would be really weird, although I would admire that. Um, <clears throat> the show Isolation Nation is, uh, is probably, for me, kind of like the fulfillment of a dream. And w when I say that, it's, it's like all roads of my life. Let's say there's five roads in my life. This one is the professional road. This one is my own struggles with mental health. This one is my desire to, uh, to at least sometimes be interesting and entertaining. Uh, this little piggy went to market and this little piggy went home. So that's the, now, are you familiar with the little piggy story? I am. Okay. Cause you didn't show any facial reaction there. And I'm thinking, oh my God, he doesn't even know what I'm talking about. I must think I'm really weird. So we do the show Isolation Nation. We do it every day, Monday to Friday. We have since April the 1st. And our goal is to, is to give people, especially during COVID-19, a place to turn where they can feel like others are talking about the things that they are experiencing. Uh, and it's been a phenomenal experience. It's like I get to, I get to go back to off the record um, and do many of the same things. Uh, and to do it though, in a topic that's far more important to me than sports, which would be, you know, mental health. So uh, we do this every day and we launch the show at five o'clock. We're live and then it lives on our website, sicknotweek.com, on our Facebook page, on Twitter and any else, any other place that we can find. And I, I think it's unique um, because it does have a sense of humor and because we do balance off the really difficult topics and the really difficult talk with something that hopefully will make you smile. So for me, it's like the, the best thing I've ever done and has brought me more joy than anything that I've ever done professionally. That's great to hear. And there's something there for everyone. There's sports stars, there's actresses, there's doctors. There's a little bit of everything for everyone. There's, there's poetry and writings and, and all kinds of great things. Uh, so the County of Dufferin, on behalf of the County of Dufferin and the residents, I thank you for joining us today. We're going to make a donation to sicknotweek.com uh, on behalf of the residents. And uh, I would ask that anybody who's watching, if they're looking for somewhere to make a donation, uh, check out sicknotweek.com. Allow Michael the ability to continue to help those who need help and, uh, and want help uh, when mental health is concerned. So thank you, Michael Landsberg, for joining us today. I really, truly appreciate it, uh, your insight and your, and your kind words today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, the donation, just, just so we get it clear, um, you asked for it. I didn't because I'm, I'm very totally. aware of the idea of saying, yeah, you know, I'll come on and talk to you because I think, you know, the message is really important. And then when you ask people for something, even though it's for a charity, I still never feel right about it. And uh, so thank you for that. I'm used to getting not a donation, but a crappy mug. Do you <laughs> possibly have a crappy mug that I could have? You know what? I can get Nancy to send you a crappy mug. We have a number of crappy mugs at, at uh, County Council. And, uh, you know, I'm used to getting crappy mugs when I go out and speak and different things as well. So I, I hear you on that. Thank um, you. Michael, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and, and try to enjoy the rest of isolation and isolation nation.